Dog Motorsports is the latest, most creative, and important invention for working dog breeds in many years, with the opportunity for all dogs, regardless of breed, size, or age, to get involved with. Dog Motorsports are electric power bikes and rigs that dogs can be exercised within a variety of ways, depending on your goals, the area you're at, and time. Virtually no training is required and high energy breeds can be exercised properly, quickly and efficiently without spending hours on end trying to satisfy them, or as I like to say, tucker them out. I'm Bill Wolf Driver Hellman, also known as the Dog Adventurer, and have pioneered the whole concept of dog motor sports and have proven it with multiple generations of Huskies, constantly refining it and perfecting it for almost 30 years now. This is something you have to actually see to believe. As a wolf driver, I travel east coast of the USA with my Huskies doing dog motorsports on trails, roads, beaches, and even in the cities. Check out the latest dog motorsports video coming up right now. Hello and welcome. I'm Wolf Driver, and in case you're not familiar with me, I call myself the Dog Adventure as I travel all over the, basically the east coast of the USA to run my team of Huskies. And I've been doing this for years, almost 30 years at this point. So what makes me different from other people, what makes me different from other people doing this is that I use bikes and um, I call them dog sleds on wheels. So most people that do similar to what I do, it's called dry land mushing or urban mushing. And they're using certain rigs that are meant for dogs and certain ways they run the dogs, usually out in front on a rope. Um, a regular bike they do it with too, where the rope is actually, of course, just like a dog sled, it's kind of loose. And the problem with that for me is you need a really good trained, what they call lead sled dog. Otherwise the dogs can migrate from one side to the other. They can go left and right as far as the rope will go. And the problem becomes when you're on trails all over the place, especially in today's day and age, the trails are busy. Um, you know, with the COVID and everything, we're over that now, but people, which is wonderful, have learned to enjoy these trails because we, were, we weren't we were going to work, we were working from home and to get a breath of fresh air, we were going out to the trails. So the trails I find, because I've been doing this for years, are actually swamped now, most of them. Now, we go other places, and I'll talk about this in other episodes, that are desolate, roads, country roads, mountain roads, etc. But what I'm talking about today is a certain bike and a particular situation, what I built it for. So what I'm getting at is the dogs, I have configurations, which I'll explain shortly, where they can run on the side of the bike, which is great. That goes through all stages of life. A, a puppy can do that because he's not pulling, so it's not gonna affect their growth. And a senior dog can do that because they're not pulling. It's just basically a glorified walk. If they wanna go faster, whatever speed they wanna go, they can. What I'm doing here, I call this dog moto sports. Everything I do essentially, because everything is battery powered. So these are all electric bikes and all kinds of vehicles I use. They have battery and that does a couple things. One of them being it, a traditional musher would be on the back of a sled and would be kicking with their feet when they're going up a hill or when they're in deep snow, when they're in a situation where the dogs can't quite pull the full load, where they need a little assistance or boost. With this, with my dog moto sports, they don't need to do anything. So almost any dog can do it of any size because the bike is powered and the assistance can come at any time. I don't have to get out of the sled or be back on the sled or any situation. I can be right there and use my throttle hand, whatever side the throttle's on. So that means I don't be, have to be as fit and there doesn't have to be as much preparation or training for the dogs. It essentially means almost anybody and almost any dog can do this. So dog motorsports maybe sounds like a NASCAR term or a really um, extreme term. I'm a little bit of an extreme guy and that's how I came up with all this. But by no way, shape or form do the dogs get put in any kind of extreme situation, unless you're looking for that. You know, uh, these dogs, my dogs, I should say, husky dogs, sled dogs, they're built for extreme conditions. They're built to haul pretty much three times their own weight. They're built to uh, go in conditions 
50 below zero or less. So, I mean, they're, they're extreme. So I'm basically trying to keep up with them and develop ways in a modern day world we can have these breeds of dogs as family pets and give them the exercise they need. Big mis, mis, mistaking part of everything is people see dogs on a bike or a sled or some kind of vehicle and they're like, oh my gosh, that's the worst thing in the world you can do for that dog. And people that think that way just don't understand their lineage, lineage if I'm saying that right, their, their traits and about the breeds because these dogs again are built to work. And if you take a working breed and you don't give them a job or a purpose or a task, they become unruly, especially like a husky, a very intelligent breed dog. They entertain themselves and they get into trouble. They dig holes in the yards, they tear up houses, they escape, escape their yards, their, their home, and they're very disobedient and very hard to train. But when you satisfy their need for intense physical exercise, that's when they become really manageable and more of a pet, believe it or not. So more of your family, not as rugged or extreme. So what I'm saying is you can tame the wilds in the sled dog breeds by doing some of the things I'm doing and you'll be able to have a better life with your dog, giving them everything they need and you'll be part of the team. You'll be the partner. So it can be just one dog. It can be four dogs. It can be many more dogs, depending on your lifestyle and what you do. But again, this is all done on, lo it can be on local bike trails and roads nearby, fields nearby, whatever. And um, as your dog develops, I go 15 to 30 miles. So as you, and depending on, of course, the age of the dog and the temperatures, the conditions, etc. But as you develop, we start with a mile, we start real slow. And again, it's a real easy training process. But as we, we go, we, um, we build up. And when you can't go as far, you go faster. So there's all kinds of ways to do this. Dog motorsports, I'll go into more of that. Just wanted to give a quick introduction of what this is all about. So I'm gonna to talk today about my first bike. I, about one of the, I should say, my first bike's long, been and gone. One of my newest bikes, which I call a hybrid appropriately because a lot of people refer to a gas and electric car today as a hybrid. So I'm calling this a hybrid because it does a multiple of things. So basically what I started out with is what they call a recumbent trike. And these things today are pretty mainstream, relatively speaking. Recumbent is a term that means you're kind of low down, laid back a little bit. And it's easier for people as they get my age, we get bad knees, bad backs. This makes it really comfortable to pedal. And I'll, I'll sit in there for a second. So if I was biking, if I was traditionally biking this, I would have pedals here and I would be pedaling. And you can see I'm kind of, low down, laid back, everything's at my control, my, my hands, pretty straightforward, but a really comfortable and good ride. So I, I enjoy this recumbent bike and it's become, as you see me get out of there, stumbling around, it's become um, kind of mainstream for me in all my bike designs. One of the coolest things about it for doing the dogs is that it's low down, so you're on the dog level which I think for training them and running with them is something that is in, in, incredible. And especially when you're talking new dogs, when they can be eye level with you, it's a great experience for them. Plus you can keep the best eye on them as possible because you're not high above them or higher above them. So this bike, as you see, again, a hybrid, I call it my hybrid bike again, has multiple features that we've added. So this is totally redone. I'll talk about the first thing because I showed you I have no pedals. So this bike comes with pedals. Almost all bikes come with pedals, as you're familiar with. Today's day and age, you can get bikes that are pedal assist and throttle. Some have, even have a throttle like this one. So pedal assist means if you're going, you can 
decide how much assistance you want, but it uses a motor, so you can say, um, do 25% of what I'm doing, how I'm pedaling, give me 25% more power, up to sometimes 200% more power. That comes in handy uh, as you're older, as you're less physical, maybe not in condition, maybe you have a handicap, you can help it, it can help you pedal and almost pedal for you climbing up a hill. So regular biking, it's got a real need. Uh, some of them, like I prefer having a throttle also because you don't have to worry about just the motion of pedaling, just even though you're not really pedaling if you increase your pedal assistance speed, but a throttle comes in real handy as well. So <clears throat> I use, this bike was purchased and a lot of them that are sold with motors. By the way, motors and everything are, are, are really, the laws have become that almost all trails allow them, at least federal trails. Um, different states are doing different things, but they're allowing, they, they classify them. Like this is a class two, which has to do with pedal assistance and what, how, how powerful the motor is, like 500 watts, et cetera. So you have to look into where you're going. I've never had a problem on a trail, again, because I'm running dogs and I can't go fast. The problem becomes when people go flying down the trails in these things. That's what they don't want, putting other people in jeopardy, of course, messing up the trail, tire marks, whatever the case may be. We're moving slow. So, but there are different classifications, just so you know. So we have removed the pedal here. And again, Dog Motorsports, this is my genius design because I've been doing it for years. And my team, I have a team. I couldn't do this without my people team. So they help me, I get the idea, they help me put it in motion and make it happen from welding to electrical to anything. So we took the pedal assembly out and this is kind of like a boom for lack of a better description. We found a piece of metal basically that would fit this pedal as it falls over, this pedal assembly, this bar. So this, where it comes in is really strong, the receiver, because it holds the pedals that it's designed for a person to resist, to pedal, to, 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 to put a lot of pressure on. So I knew it would have the strength needed to support a long bar here. This is approximately a nine foot bar. So what this bar does, and I'm gonna have to, usually we have two people. This bar is aluminum, by the way. It's been wrapped with a pipe wrap, just to keep it a little more comfortable if the dogs would run into it. Let me see. Uh, Yep, there we go. So you can see the bar goes in there real easily. I don't even have the brake on here. <laughs> it's um, ingenious design. So I've made, I'm working on making different variations of the bar. Now I'm one person. I'm usually out there with three people, two other people, minimal when I do my dog trips. Again, this can be done a lot easier for one person, and I'll go into that in future episodes. But as you can see, I'm one person here. I put it in the pedal assembly slot, and I have these bars, and these I call U-bars. So they're currently made for dog scooters. There's a couple companies out there that make these dog scooters that these U-bars go on, and your dog kind of goes next to you, similar to what I do, but I've just repurposed them. And we made this all on quick release locks or bolts, if you will, setups. So you can see, I simply push this out and lock it in a place where I want, and the dog fits inside of the U-bar. Now, the dog is hooked to these specialized carabiners, and these are something that I found. All of my equipment has been thoroughly researched and tested by me. So anything I recommend will probably work for any dog anybody's going to run. But <clears throat> these specialized carabiners are really cool because they're triple lock, they call them. So you have to push two levers down in order to open up. So I've run dogs before and carabiners and latches have opened and then the dog's running free. Most of my dogs, all my training I do is off leash, so it's usually not a problem, but the dog doesn't even know usually they're running free. They just stay where they're at. And it's my job to know that and go back and put them in the appropriate position or, or you know, reattach them. But these have little springs. Again, the spring mechanism is designed by the 
people, by the companies that have made these U-bars. But what makes them really nice is as the dog pulls, there gets a little bit, there's a little bit of flex in there. And these are rubber straps. The carabiner, again, they make these for anybody to use any kind of carabiner. I researched and found these carabiners, which are not cheap. They're like 60 bucks each, but they work. So we use a specialized harness and I'll go into harnesses later, but it hooks to both sides, almost like the dogs drafting or, or pulling appropriately, which they can be on this. And the dog's head is here and we'll show a picture. The dog's running great. And this keeps the dog totally in place. So the dog's not gonna be able to move to the left, obviously not move to the right. They're not gonna be able to move out of this. So anybody, we pass on the trail any obstacle, anything we come across that the dogs might have interest in and might wanna go towards, they won't be able to do that. Now they might try to pull a little bit, but they, this is a real easy way of teaching them what they call in sled dog talk, on by, or on by means go past the distraction. There's another dog there you wanna see. There's a bear, there's a person, there's you know um, something on the ground they wanna eat, they wanna sniff. They won't be able to do that with this on by. That's what sled dog mushers say to their dogs and they get them to pass a distraction when they train them. So again, this doesn't require any real training because the dog can't really go anywhere. So we have, I have two dogs I do in the front. I do the same thing. I open the bars up. I have all kinds of safety in here. I just put the ball here in case the dog would lay down, which is fine. I don't want the end of the bar, even though we've taken all the possibility of them hurting themselves on. I just feel better with the ball on there. So that's just actually a dog pet ball and it fits nicely over the bar. So, these bars are also adjustable in height, in distance, if you want to go further. I try to keep everything under 36 inches because the minimal requirement usually on almost all trails is 36 inches to get through gates and bollards and all that good stuff. So this is a, a really innovative setup that I've incorporated current availability from people that have designed this for dogs and used it in a totally different purpose. By the way, you might be asking yourself, there's two screws that go into there and they're just tightened down and this bar will never come out. So the bar's aluminum again, so it's relatively lightweight. The, the um, weight becomes in these bars, because they're steel, we're working on now making them out of aluminum so it'll be super light and it doesn't need to be steel for the dogs. <clears throat> so that is this assembly and by the way on the front i've got headlights again if you open this up these swing out and i'm going to open this one here so um i've got a headlight here and what's really cool about this headlight is it's remote control for my phone so and from a remote they have so i can control this and it's not in the dog's eyes and it's not back here where you know i have to compete with the dogs and everything else i can see in case i'm out running at night so this bike, um, because it's, it's a lightweight, small trike, the trike means three wheels, becomes um, the tires aren't really built for off-roading. The bike's not really made for that. So I use different bikes that I, I have customized, built, et cetera, for off-roading. This is for more bike trails kind of tame bike trails, nothing, nothing too crazy. I call them, most of them uh, look for rails to trails because most rails to trails, that's a, a type of trail that is actually, um, uh, they were old railroad tracks and the municipalities where they're at have turned them into trails and some of them are quite long. So this, this bike is perfect for rails to trails. Uh, you may be familiar with it if you're a bike rider. So on the back here, we've customized this some more and let me, get on your side here. So I put these same bars essentially, and I made them so this one, uh, oh, my bag's holding it, excuse me for this. So you might see this teetering a little bit, by the way. So we put a weight back here, a 25 pound weight to offset this. If it goes over, it's not gonna hurt anybody. But by the way, when we're, when we're going with the aluminum, there's enough flex in there. It never comes down on the dog. That's a huge concern. Safety is always my number one factor. This never comes down on the dog. This has a 25 pound weight, plus there's water in there. When the water comes out, that's why there's a 25 pound weight there. Of course, you lose, you lose the weight of the water when you take it out to water the dogs. But this comes out just like this, and it locks into place. I don't use these as much, 
But again, you have this same setup with the dogs there and the dogs can run alongside. So if I'm running an older dog or I um, just want to go for speed, I just want to take one dog out or two dogs. It has it on this side too. Um, then I just, right, right there, then I just easily carry the bike and I don't need the pole attachment and I just take it down to the trail and roll. There's one other thing we built in here and I'm going to show you this. This is called a Springer. So I don't know if you can see it. Um, I, I don't, I have a lead on this side. So again, don't use these as much, but depending on what I'm doing, how I'm training a dog, etc. And you'll understand this in one second. Again, I'm using the triple carabiner. By the way, this, this triple lock carabiner has a swivel on it. So the, so it can't, so it can't get twisted, which is a huge thing too, because even though you're running dogs on short leads, depending on what we're doing, the, the twivel, makes all the difference in the world because I've had dogs twist their harness, get twisted. Not that they get hurt, but it takes time. You've got to stop, you've got to adjust the dog, and you've got to hope it doesn't do it again. This swivel prevents that from happening. Again, killer find on this. So this would go into the Springer, which is hard to see, and this would go back. Let me, a uh, little bit of loosening here. So the dog, and this is out of the dog's way now, and the dog could run here. So if a dog doesn't want to be, and I'll pull this a little forward so you can see this a little better maybe. So the Springer here, if the dog, for some reason, it's a warmer day, you don't want to use a harness on both sides, you can just attach the dog for the Springer. And the Springer, just like it says, it has a spring in it. So the dog has some resistance if it would need it, but it's not a, a if, you, if you have to break all of a sudden or the dog stops to go to the bathroom, it's not like, boom, jerked along. He's actually, the, the spring absorbs that. So in case you didn't see this, I'm gonna bring this out one more time. Sorry, that goes like that. So you would never use these at the same time. But again, the U-bar, if you wanna run the dog that way, and a Springer, if you wanna run the dog just on a single point harness. With the U-bars, again, the dogs hook up in two places. So this is the hybrid bike and that's the dissertation. There's all kinds of, just on my designs, there's all kinds of things that I take into consideration because I run them everywhere and I've been doing this for so many years, I know what they need. Just like a bag, this is a first aid kit, dog booties, stuff that you may need along the journey. I've always got it with me, so I take this no matter what. I've got another bike, that, another bag that has lights in it. I usually wear a pack on me, all that good stuff. The back of this, again, has water, holds the water bowl. I use a big water jug, which I um, take the dogs and I can water them right out of there so I don't need a separate water bowl. The saddlebags here, if you will, they hold the batteries for this particular bike. And I've done a lot with battery systems. Right now I'm using the ones that came with it, but I use Ego brand batteries that I'm adapting all my bikes to, which is really interesting. We'll go on that another time on a dog power, uh, sorry, dog motorsports episode. And I use a phone holster. Um, mirrors are essential for, for what I'm doing, especially as people are passing me. But if you'll notice my width this way is no wider than 36 inches. I think I'm like 35 inches because again, almost all areas you're gonna go to have at least a 36 inch, they should, gateway. And this also allows, usually you'll find a lot of trails, rail trails especially, have enough room for someone to pass you where I won't have to pull over and stop. So dog motorsports again, just so you know, I'll come back here, just so you know is one of the greatest things I can do for my dogs. And I'm very elaborate in this design. I know some people will want to do this. We'll put more information up how we developed it and maybe at some point even sell some of this equipment once we refine it enough and it's easier to ship and lightweight, etc. But a lot of people can build this themselves, can have someone help them build it. I'm not doing this to make money per se by selling equipment, but um, just to help people because the Husky is one of the most abandoned and surrendered breeds because people get them because they're so cool. A lot of times they look like wolves and they love that. And they're so cute as puppies. They're super appealing to people. The problem is 
when they get done being puppies, they become adult dogs and adult working breed dogs. And a simple bike with an attachment like the Springer I showed here, getting a little more elaborate, a scooter some places make, or a um, bike with even a U-bar, if you can properly do that, we've done that too, makes all the difference in the world. The big thing I'm adding here is the motor, which almost nobody out there is doing, and the motor just gives you the ability, because I'm showing my age here, I'll be 56 here in a few days, um, don't have the physical capability I did when I was younger, so that motor just means I can have these work and breed dogs till my golden years, basically. So I'm Wolf Driver, Dog Moto Sports on the uh, internet, and you can keep looking here. I'm hoping to do a series of these videos. I've got so many bikes that I've done for so many different applications, whether it's snow, whether it's mountain ranges, or wherever you want to go. Even in the summer, I've got a bike that blows misting, that has misting fans on it, so it's blowing water. I have a specialized cooler. I've done a lot of work. So you're going to see stuff you've never seen before, ever. I'm the only one doing it, and I'd love to bring it to you and let you share in on it. And if you've got any questions or any concerns, whatever, please put it in the comments section. I'm always on Facebook, Wolf Driver. Thanks for tuning in.